use that. And that's in the case of an emergency, if we ever do have a blackout, the port would still be operating. If a port does not operate in just a single day, you use millions of dollars. I think it was a, uh, estimated as a billion dollars gets lost every day that a port is not operating. So we want to be able to be independent. On the same end, if anything were to happen on the city side, we'd be able to supply city uh, power to the city as well. So it'd be a mutual ben uh, mutually beneficial um, venture. Still just a concept, research is being done, but uh, we are looking for those alternative sources and clean sources of energy. So over on the left, we have iron ore. And that's just used to make uh, for steel manufacturing, to make steel strong. So it's mined over in Colorado, brought over here by rail. This is one of the newest exports that we have at the port. And a lot of people ask, well, why, aren't th why isn't that in sheds? You have the petroleum coke on sheds, doesn't touch air. Why isn't this in sheds? And that's because um, iron ore is too heavy. Like, even with the wind, uh, it's just a heavy substance, so it wouldn't get blown over. question. Um, as you know, it's not only clothes and shoes uh, that are getting transported in these containers, food, um, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, flowers, all of that need to be in a temperature, uh, in a controlled container. And those are refrigerated containers. They're essentially big walk-in refrigerators. They're called reefers in the industry. And so every ship usually has a section of those, of those refrigerated containers. And that's how those uh, items are transported across the ocean. As we come up on the north side, we can see the, uh, the new pillars for the new bridge, which is going to be a lot higher. So if you see the arch on this top of this bridge, that's where the lanes are going to be for the new bridge. So it's going to have an additional 200 feet of clearance. And what's surprising, when this bridge wasn't built, an emergency lane wasn't planned for. So if you get one of these trucks breaking down, you have a serious traffic issue. So our new bridge is going to have more lanes. It's going to have an emergency lane. It's going to be less of a steep grade, so it's going to be a lot more pedestrian and cyclist friendly. So we're going to have pedestrian paths, cycling paths, viewing decks. It's going to be lit up, lit up with LED lights. So it's not only just for port operations, it really is a bridge being built for the community and for the city. So these are the two main bases right here. And you see a lot more, but these are the two big ones. It's going to be the highest structure in the city of Long Beach once completed. And this bridge is actually implementing some very cool technology. For the first time, it's being used on a bridge like this in California. It's a movable scaffolding system, MSS. So what it is, it, uh, any time you have a construction project, right, you build scaffolding, you work from there, take it down, move over, build scaffolding. You can imagine that takes quite a bit of time. Time is money. So what this system does is the scaffolding system, it's sliding over coming to get me in the middle. So the scaffolding just slides over. If you look at the orange structure right there, it looks like it's up at an angle. That's what it is, the movable scaffolding system. So the first time it's being used on a bridge here in California. We had a question about the reefers. I was talking about the refrigerated containers earlier. So if you look over here at Matson, these white containers, you can see the black like circuitry on the back. Those are the refrigerated containers. So they look almost identical to regular containers. That's the really distinguishing factor. And Matt said, if you looked at all the other terminals, it looked like a rainbow of colors, right? You had an array of different um, containers with different uh, different company names on them. Matson, it's generally, they're all Matson containers. And that's because this is an American shipping line. So this is a shipping line that deals primarily with Hawaii. A little bit of Guam, a little bit of Asia, but primarily Hawaii. So that's why if you ever go to Hawaii, things are quite um, a bit pricier than they would be here. That's because almost all, everything that they have is imported. So that adds that premium on their pricing. They determined though, so some feasibility studies are being put into place, but this is the last piece of undeveloped land we have.
So here we see some Chiquita banana containers. So these are all probably re refrigerated containers right here, carrying food. So you gotta think about it. If you're eating grapes in April, those grapes more than likely weren't grown here. They were grown in Chile. So, and then they come over here. So a lot of our produce even, even though we're in California, right? And we get, we have, we're lucky to have a lot of produce year round. A lot of it is still imported from other countries. So it's coming through these containers right here. So um, I wanna point out this bridge. The Port of Long Beach is home to a lot of filming, a lot of filming permits that we're giving out. Um, so if you ever saw Inception, where the van's falling in slow motion off the bridge, that's the bridge it was falling off of. Transformers was filmed here, a lot of Fear Factor episodes. <laughs> uh, Terminator 2, Fast and Furious, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That uh, car scene chase was filmed right here. So a lot of movies filmed out here as well. We have a, a you know that great industrial background. Officially closed down in 97 though. side we have the Gerald Desmond Bridge. Over at the Port of LA you have the Vincent Thomas Bridge. be a park area. So this is called Goal Park. And it's for birds, migratory birds, to nest safely away from human interaction. So humans aren't allowed in that area. A lot of birds used to nest where the Navy base used to be. And once the Navy base was shut down and we, uh, we used that area as terminal, we brought a lot of trees over here, put speakers in them to mimic the bird calls so that the birds would be motivated to nest here instead of over there so that they wouldn't be disrupted. So it's just an area for these birds to set uh, nest safely. And then on the tip of the island, we have one of two air monitoring stations that we have at the port. So 24 seven, you can go on our website, polb.com and get a live feed of what the air quality is. It varies from day to day. Um, it is uh, side by side next to the federal regulations. Like I said, we have been able to reduce those emissions by quite a bit. So you'll see the, um, how, how we're doing compared to the federal regulations.